So I reached out to my friend to talk to him about it. And it turns out that he actually didn't send this message. <laughs> Dude, it, these guys deserve this. They deserve this. That's so insane. Uh, wait, she faked evidence? No, we don't know that for sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Tipster, I appreciate the boat of confidence there. <laughs> George responded when I went live. In my defense, I was taking a shower and I found out in my chat while the thing was going, while the music was playing as I sat down, uh, that apparently some of the biggest news in the last few days has come to light. And we're watching that live right now, ladies and gentlemen. As the as the youngins start to filter in, all of the the Minecrafters, if I, if you will, uh, start to flow through the uh, the content canal and get to the stream. We are going to be embarking on a journey. Oh, that's my favorite terminology for something like this. I haven't watched this yet because it's brand new. It's fresh. It's freshly slimy, weasley. <laughs> It's freshly 20, he, he made it 27 minutes, one for every age he was when he had sex with that, when he had brutal, brutal eye sex with that, uh, freshly 18 year old sh**. Yeah, we have a freshly upvoted, uh, Reddit post with a freshly dropped YouTube video chat. We have, uh, we have my response here. Uh, this video is on the George Not Found streams channel, so if most of the people who would need to see this video didn't, it's, it's not around for 9 million of his followers which is always fun. That's usually a staple in these. Uh, George's response is not found if you're looking for it on the on the quick. But don't worry, all ads are off on the video. Well, they're not off on my stream. Boys, uh, I have a pretty stacked event for you tonight because I was planning on just doing a game stream. I'm not going to lie. So we have we have fresh we have freshly uh, freshly released content. OK, we have freshly adult content to listen to. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live to the sold out YouTube crowd of one thousand one hundred and forty seven concurrent viewers. Now it is time for our main event. George not found is the subject of gonna get really 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 weird numbering these because this is technically not a numbered episode at the moment but i believe it probably will by the end of the night it's time <laughs> all right chat let's get into this fucker um george not found just for lore purposes uh actually can we can you play me in real fast uh, because we do need a a lore update chat. Um, uh, did you hear any of the lore? Glad you asked, Spencer. We are going to be going over the quick lore. So Katie drops a live stream, cries. We've covered this on multiple other URR related or affiliated live streams. Okay, she claims she's been sexually assaulted. Um. Not if I have something to say about it. I mean, hold on, wait, wait, all right. Let me, before I get based, let me explain. Uh, so George comes out and releases a video himself defending himself in the situation. And everyone goes, oh, okay, that's a pretty, you know, good response or whatever. Uh, and then Katie drops a sniper reaction, disproving a main portion of George's argument about the wristbands and the 21 plus parties. And at this point, everyone was wondering, like, what the fuck actually happened? People on Twitter thought there was a rape based off of the case, uh, based off of the comments made. And by the way, when a girl says, I felt dirty in a way I couldn't wash off, you would kind of think that there was more than tickling going on, tickling under the stomach after an hour's worth of cuddling. Now, normal people read her statement and went, wait a minute, you guys cuddled for an hour? Why was that not in your stream? That's kind of a big piece of information to omit. And then George Not Found went, Uh-oh, 
better go apologize. I'm gonna lose my career. So he played the he paid the retard tax and the Minecraft tax and put himself in a horrible position going into this video now. So let's see if he could sp spend his his age, his 27 minutes of fame here, to try to dig himself out of the hole he's created, because I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, if we're doing Am I the Asshole, uh, let's see, YTA, You're the Asshole, No Asshole here. Uh, we're gonna grade this one so far a NRH, which stands for No Rape Here, okay? Uh, that's where we're at with this with this drama, okay? So let's get this thing going. Oh no, Katie Box recently did a stream and accused me of something very serious. I made a response and then she made a follow-up response. This is my response to her follow-up. Throughout this video- I'm All right, guys. So this is a response to a response to a response. Got it. I'm going to be showing clips from some other people just for context. And just to make it clear, I don't want any hate to be sent to anyone, including these people. Here are the two tweets that I- George, I'll be doing a very serious stream today. This post just makes that clear. I'm gathering all of the information and evidence to share. I have never and uh, would never broken someone's sexual boundaries or assaulted anyone. And then following Katie's response in the stream that happened, since reading Katie's newest post, my perspective on that night and my overall conclusion has massively changed as she introduced new information that I was not aware of at all before. I have much more I will say, but for now, Katie, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I really hope you can hear my words and try to understand that I did not have any bad intentions. That does not change the fact that you were hurt. I will be saying more soon. Hold on. Has he not made a response before? Uh, this response before? No, this is a new response. This is 40 minutes ago. We, if you think you've seen everything on this story, you haven't, because I don't think anyone else knows this came out yet. Uh, maybe Jay Stock beat us to it, but I mean, listen, boys, listen. He's not commentary, not in our sector. Posted about the situation. Tell me how the audio is. A little low on my end. These are now deleted as I only made them to let people know that I had intentions to make a response, and I didn't want people to think I was just completely radio silent in the time that I needed to make those responses. First of all, I just want to make it clear that my tweet that I put out after my first statement wasn't somehow admitting to guilt or oh boys the walk back is huge he's not admitting to guilt all right just again before we get before we get too far in uh my perspective has changed my overall my overall conclusion has massively changed because of her new information i'm sorry i'm so sorry i really hope you can hear my words the only thing that indicates that could be the case um is when he says uh i hope uh, you know i didn't have any bad intentions so there's a reason why people read that as a concession it's because there's really no other way to read it but that they were from her friends. So this is reasonable. I only brought up that point because the implication was that it was kind of creepy of us and we were forcing the game on them. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us and insisted on drinking games and already drunk, I obviously complied. In reality, it was mutually talked about and everyone was just having fun. So next she mentions that one of the reasons she wanted to hang out in our hotel room was because there was another creator that was in the room. But then that creator didn't actually end up being there. Again, reasonable. I didn't know this at the time. There were people in and out of our hotel room. I don't, I, I don't know why that, Matt, hold on. Wait, I'm sorry. I have to go back. I, we, we are going really quick now. Wait, what did I miss? Somehow admitting to guilt or okay. completely backtracking on what I originally said. My perspective had changed you due know to new- He's putting shit on the screen. I'm gonna call an audible. We're gonna wait till the end to play Fortnite. Okay, I'm gonna call an audible. I wanna read all the shit that's on the screen. So typically I would just play Fortnite through all this, but um, right now I'm kind of interested, to be honest. Information that Katie had provided. So now I'm just gonna go over Katie's new statement. Okay, Katie's new statement is the fucking giga long fucking eight photo uh, cluster fucks. What is that? And Actually 10 we'll photo cluster fuck. Talk about what she had to say. So first, she acknowledges the texts that- Okay. 
as for the iMessages shown outside of the Insta DMs, all proof was showing uh, a group chat that he wasn't even in, he being George. George is showing message from her friends, Katie, which isn't Katie. The only message is shown after a response from Katie is when uh, we were asked about the drinking game we played. That was after we played it the first night, the night where nothing happened. I liked the game and wanted to play it with my other friends at the convention, so I asked for the name and I didn't know how it's relevant to anything. I showed about them talking about wanting to play the drinking games are real but that they were from her friends so this is reasonable i only brought up that point because the implication was that it was kind of creepy of us and we were forcing the game on them there was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink so he says the drinking game was not forced on them there's no weird implication they actually found the game fun so fun that they asked it so they could play with their other friends that weekend drink some more as they offered the bottles to us and insisted on drinking games and already yeah, so that's the part. Insisted on drinking to drink games. some more as they offered the bottles to us and insisted on drinking games and already drunk. I obviously complied. The, when she says I obviously complied after they brought out, they they gave us the bottles and they, uh, what was the other one? And insisted on drinking games. And they insisted on drinking games. It feels like you're like in a position where like the tension could be cut with a knife, all right? They just keep fucking funneling you alcohol. The idea is that they're just, they're just, they're bringing out bottles upon bottles. It's like when you go out to dinner with an Italian family. First, they bring out some food, then you get to order. And they just bring out course after course after course. And by the end of it, you feel like your stomach's been raped. Okay, that's what happened with the alcohol in, in her version of the story. And already drunk, I obviously complied. In reality, it was mutually talked about and everyone was just having fun. So next she mentions that one of the reasons she wanted to hang out in our hotel room was because there was another creator that was in the room. I don't know why this matters, but apparently she didn't want to go back the second night. She wanted to go there to clout chase a different big YouTuber. That's her actual argument, not me being uncharitable. Supposedly, she was like, damn, I really wish I can go hang with this other big YouTuber. Oh, I guess I'll just settle for dreaming, George. But then that creator didn't actually end up being there. Again, reasonable. I didn't know this at the time. There were people in and out of our hotel room throughout the whole event, so she could have potentially heard of anyone being there. When her group was on the way to the hotel, she was messaging me, bantering about whether or not I would actually be there or not. Me and Katie are coming back to Hyat. Can somebody... What is Zoomer? Wait, what is that term? What is Hyat? Is that like Yat? Like, what is that? Like, what? Oh, God. Jesus, that's the first thing I'm like, wow, these people are young. Hyat. That means hotel in retard. Okay, got it. Uh, if you come to Dreams Hotel again tonight, I'm shooting your leg. Oh, awkward. Yeah, apparently I'm go. Oh, the Hyatt! Oh, I'm retarded! No! Oh, my God, that's so bad. All right. And that made me <laughs> think that she was... I thought it was Zoomer speak, bro. Never mind. Freshly 18 have been uh, rumors have been greatly exaggerated. I'm not that old yet. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe she didn't care and she just. <laughs> How did you not get? Fuck you. Fuck you, chat. <laughs> this is the kind of coverage you ask for when you when you come here to see me cover these things. This is what you get with me, dude wanted to see the other creator or just to be with her friends next she shows our instagram dms and she said that a reason she kept messaging me in a friendly way for a while after this whole thing happened was because and this is a quote she felt lucky to be talking to a verified account someone famous someone <laughs> why would you write that when i had followed and watched for a while dude I, i'm so lucky to be talking to a verified account and it's like you know who the verified account is hold on I can't wait till this gets said in, the, said in the future. Oh, I'm so lucky to be talking to a verified account. Does anyone have... Oh, did he fucking remove his chat? No, he didn't. Dude, dude I, I'm so happy to talk to a verified account. Dude, the verified account... A verified account in question is fucking... Dude, I'm just so happy, bro. I'm so happy, bro. Now, this is not something that I was thinking about at all. I wasn't aware that she ever watched my content in the past. That was never brought up. This actually makes me feel Chad, pretty bad. where does a person the size of George not found go for pussy? Can I just ask, like, genuinely, all right? Where, where does a person for, who has 10 million subscribers go to ensure that not one of them have seen the YouTube video? Does anyone... Is there, like, a... 
Do you have to date blind deaf women if you're this big on YouTube so that no one would know that you have a massive channel? Because you could say, well, I mean, maybe his audience is mostly young, so they don't necessarily know uh, if older people he's dating could possibly have. Okay, but like the older women is just going to look up and find out that he's got a huge 10 million sub YouTube channel. Just be like, if you're fucking cringe and gay about power dynamics, you're absolutely still not okay with that. Because power dynamics, once you start to argue them, all the people who claim this shit back up into like wealth based power dynamics. Because it is power dynamics of like literally every fucking type of relationship. But wealth based power dynamics are probably arguably just as bad here yeah you you're dating a fucking bajillionaire does that mean you have to be in my tax bracket do you have to be in george's tax bracket to date him too like what's the fucking like jesus like how do you pick a girlfriend i'd the only reason she was messaging me was because i have subscribers or something i would never want that again the only reason i actually brought up you have to go to a, you know what he has to date a fucking more not a mormon what are the fucking people who don't have power um holy shit i'm blacking out here um I'm drawing a total blank. Like, what, what is the fucking... The Amish! He has to date the fucking Amish, bro. Messaging after the fact was to show that we were still friendly afterwards and that I didn't know that she was uncomfortable at the time. She also confirms that we did talk on Snapchat, like I said, but also that nothing really happened there either. The next thing she talks about is the elevator. She said that we left at the same time and that her hotel room was on the other side of the hotel. So there was like kind of two corridors connected by uh, an elevator room in the middle. So she's saying that she was just going past the elevator to get to her room. And again, this is totally reasonable. I brought this up because from her stream, the way that it was told kind of implied that I followed her out and then that she waited to take the next elevator instead of getting in with me while I tried to convince her. Hold on, someone in chat. You might not understand this because you're ice cream cone, but imagine George slamming a 30 year old woman. So that problem is gone. Okay, so is the 30 year old woman also like a multimillionaire or is that like just not a, not a factor then? Like he, he, she's good, all right? She's a, she, she makes about 100,000 per year and her husband has no power dynamic over her who can buy and sell her on the black market if he really wanted to. <laughs> like, I mean, come on! Like, I, oh, it's, it's all about the clout? Give me a break. To get in. I'll just play the clip of her saying this so I'm not speaking for her. I went to leave and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get in the oh, elevator to prove it was broken. Elevator. In my original video, I just wanted to clarify this, that we left together um, because the night was over and that she was on the same floor, so she didn't actually the have elevator. to take the elevator. And it seems like she agrees with this now. So next she agrees with me that she didn't mention my online friend that I just met that day. She said she didn't mention him though because he left early and he didn't even know his name. And she shows a text message that she says is from him from the night where this happened, where he says this. Obviously this is- So we have this, all right, so she's provided a source of someone we're not allowed to know, and she censored his name to look like a penis. Okay, that's where we're at here. Was implying that he was kind of uncomfortable with what was happening, and also that he knew her age, despite just meeting her. And when I first saw this, this actually majorly changed my perspective on the night, because that would mean that my friend was also uncomfortable and somehow knew her age when I didn't. And even though she said that he left early, my memory of it was actually that he was the last to leave just before me and Katie left. Dream also came to me and mentioned that this changed his perspective of the night as well, because that would mean that he was essentially the only person that wasn't uncomfortable and that therefore he should have known. This really concerned me. I kind of was just sitting there like really thinking how, how could this have happened? So I reached out to my friend to talk to him about it. And it turns out that he actually didn't send this message. I'm gonna <laughs> so he jumped the gun and apologized before he talked to his fucking friend. No! <laughs> Guys, I just wanted to put out a statement so people know. Oh, this guy. Oh, this fucking guy. So he just... Wait, so Katie got a message from someone she hardly knows. He assumed... Oh, okay, that's my good close friend. So Dream comes to him and they have a mutual conversation about, oh my God, we fucked this whole thing up. So Dream fires up a space and cries. George comes out and concedes. And then he goes, hey buddy, I didn't know you had a problem with this. And the guy's, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't even know what the fuck you're talking. I didn't send that text message. And he's like, oh. <laughs> Dude, it, these guys deserve this. They deserve this. That's so insane. Uh, wait, she faked evidence? No, we don't know that for sure. I, maybe I pause champed it. I, it could just be a different person. George could just be just fucking pause champed his own drama. 
play a phone call that I had with him after I found this out, just because I think it gives more context. What's up? So there is a text that is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that. Wait, I how is it claimed to be of you? The person's anonymous. Unless, like, no one else was in the room the whole night. Why wouldn't they iron that out before they make this? We don't even know who this person is. Next, um, I found out about it when you sent- Is that Dumpy? Send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, no, that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. I didn't <laughs> ask them for any of their phone numbers or anything like that. Can you kind of just talk me through your, like anything that you're- Dude, this is insane. So wait, she comes out and she goes, I have an anonymous source of someone I hardly know. And they reached out to me to provide this statement. And then this guy is like, I'm going to call your anonymous source and not tell anyone who he is and play his voice like unimpeded. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Remember from- And it's Dumpy! No, I'm kidding. It's not Dumpy. Um, essentially the entire event. A little bit before VidCon, I hit you up to hang out and then you mentioned that you had an extra bed for your hotel. We got there around like five o'clock. We just went out to your room, like met up. I think it was Dude, he literally torched his credibility and got fucking- Chat, do you understand how bad this has gotten for him? This guy literally got cut from a Feastables brand deal, okay, because he put that tweet out. I guarantee it's literally because he posted the conceding tweet. But he literally got cut from a fucking Fe Feastables Instagram deal, okay? And if you go to, um, this is the photo that was removed from the IG. You can see that George was found. And then when you actually look at it now, it's gone. Jo uh, that's the uh, tweet. George is now no longer found in that tweet. Um, it also appears he got banned from night.co, which was his brand agency prior to all of this. Um, yeah, his, his, his link on his talent agency site. I don't know. Is this? A rebranded talent agency thing from where I used to be signed to? I don't know if it's the same one. No, Hassan's here. It definitely isn't. Oh, that's not Hassan. Oh, that is Hassan. Uh, but he got dropped from his fucking brand agency. Like, this guy got, like, a lot of real-world consequences because he didn't call his friend and ask him if he sent a fucking message. That's insane. Or it's like 9 or 10 o'clock, we met up at, at Dream Spot. Then it was just us three for a bit, and then you or Dream mentioned, like, just having some people come over and hang out. We were playing, I forget what the drinking was called. It was, I think it was kind of like Cards Against Humanity. Something. They were playing Cards Against Humanity. That was the drinking game. You've got... <laughs> similar to that. I didn't really notice That's the that. nerdiest drinking game I've ever heard. Anything out of the ordinary. I didn't really notice any... Wait, look at the jump cut. George is, like, facing a different direction every jump cut. Like, he just can't stand still. Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. Wait. It was... I think it was kind of like Cards Against Humanity. Something similar to that. I didn't really notice... <laughs> dude, he's... Dude, he's fucking... What is it called? What... Someone just explain this to me. What is it called when you, like, try to puff your chin out? Uh, so you can have, like, a sick jawline. Is he, um... Is he, like, he looks right now, he's like, this motherfucker. He's mewing. He's literally mewing. I think it was kind of like Cards Against Humanity, something similar to that. I didn't really notice any- Dude, he's so mad, he popped into a mew. Anything out of the ordinary, I didn't really notice any, anything like that. He's mew-maxing? True. Or anything like that. It was a little playful, maybe a little flirty. Uh, <laughs> Dude, this guy started, he gets so mad, he's, he popped into a mew, um, you know? I noticed you guys were just kind of, like, playing with each other and just, like, kind of cuddled up a little bit on the couch, so I was just- it definitely didn't seem like she was, like, uncomfortable, you know? I don't know, it seemed like everybody that was there was... You literally just said the words, Who are the people without power? I'm blacking out. I, you have to be, like, absolutely retarded to think that a... Alright, whatever. <laughs> having, a, having a good time, because, I mean, we were there pretty late, so... I, I don't really follow, like, this internet stuff like that, so I'm not up to date with what's going on online. The way she was explaining everything uh i mean at least to me like it didn't it was not like that at all to me it kind of seems like a misunderstanding there wasn't really a thought in my mind that like oh this this girl like could be in some sort of danger or she's being like preyed on or anything like that because yeah even even though george is my friend if, if i noticed him doing anything that i wouldn't want someone i'm friends with to do then i would you know i would either would say something about it or not be a part of that situation she says that you left early on in the night could you talk about that? I think around like 3 or 3.30, I went to go get tacos, and I got the party. <laughs> Dude, 
here at like 3 a.m. I went to go get tacos, oh, dude. I think around like 3 or 3.30, I went to go get tacos. So she fabric- I don't know, bro. This makes no I sense. I got the party pack or something. I got the party pack! This is the most detail we've gotten about the drama. 3 or 3.30, I went to go get tacos, and I got the party pack or something. <laughs> for some reason, I couldn't believe I actually went and got tacos. <laughs> I know for- You know what's funny is we got- when we got hammered in the hotel room, Augie offered- he ordered tacos. Like, he didn't even go get them. He had them bring the tacos to us. Back, but I got the tacos, uh like and then he like he literally just got tacos for himself and then fucking like got tacos all over the airbnb like there was just fucking we were like we were finding little pieces of fucking cheese or whatever as the day would go on there, there was like little pieces of wrappers everywhere the guy eats like a fucking when he's drunk he eats like a fucking animal like i had to go in their drive through even i was in a car like i had to walk through the drive through and like order through their speech. he walked through the drive through and ordered from this dude this is the why is this in the video yeah, that was yeah. fun I know I left at five or very close to that time because right after five, I, I texted Dream that I left open the deadbolt on his door. Right after I left, I texted him that mm -hmm. to let him know. I think that was at like five, yeah. 10 a.m. can genuinely say I had a really good good night. That's kind of the impression that I got from everybody else too. It's like everybody was having a good time, but hopefully... You know, Dude, you... why would you talk about tacos when there's a brutal rape on the loose right now and nobody's been able to catch him? Katie can maybe, I don't know if... Be friends is the right word, but I hope, I hope she feels better about it because you know I feel. Better. Dude, why would you ever be friends with someone like? That? I bet she feels like feels this way, but I don't know. It's kind of that situation. It's just fucking wild that like this whole situation came from like that night. It was just like mind boggling, dude. Dude, imagine he's like, dude, I can't believe this came from that night. I mean, you were way worse at the next party, right? <laughs> hmm. Like I wasn't. I couldn't really believe it, like half the shit I was seeing. Like if someone that was there, like like other ways that I've heard it being like described. Like from what I was like reading and watching online is actually kind of insane. So obviously after this conversation with him, I was pretty confused. Maybe it was like a misunderstanding or something because obviously they wouldn't just show this screenshot if it was fake because I could disprove that pretty easily. So I had Dream reach out to get some clarification on that. So they replied back and essentially just said that it was an accident and that Casey had gotten confused on who said what. And I it was an accident, chat. It was an accident. She she had a little oopsies track. She had a little oopsies include the wrong screenshot. Tee hee wall. Eek. I'm really not trying to nitpick anything here. I just no, dude, nitpick. Have you heard of the list of lols? I got the list, bro. You want to hear all the accidents she had? She's pissed her pants in this drama like 15 fucking times, dude. Holy shit! I I listed all of the accidents that Katie's had so far. Um, so just to go through them real fast, these are the accidents. Um. Here we go. I'm freshly 18. All right, so VidCon is June, sweetheart, and your birthday's in January. You were 18 for six months. That's not freshly. And it's kind of weird you people keep referring to girls as freshly 18. It sounds fetishizing. Um, it was my first convention. Okay, so you went to TwitchCon um, prior to this. It was actually not your first convention. We showed up drunk. Now, I don't know who to believe here, but your friend went on live stream and said, Oh, oh, Katie must have been mistaken. We didn't drink before that. Oh, okay. Uh, and then she misspoke, was claimed by her friend and others about her. Um, yeah, Katie was reading from her notes and had time to issue a pre-prepared statement. There's no such thing as misspeaking. She had plenty of time to issue both of these. In fact, she sat on these for a fucking year, chat. She sat on these allegations for fucking 365 days plus, okay, to talk about this fucking story. All right. And she read from her notes page. Everything she read on that first stream is exactly how she wanted you to hear it. It was prepared. She wrote a poem about it. OK, so I don't want to hear it. I don't care. So maybe I'm nitpicking. No, you really are not it's nitpicking. It's the truth. I'm confused on who said what. And I'm really not trying to nitpick anything here. I just really think it's important to make sure that everyone has the full picture of the whole event as it happened so that people can accurately form their Does own. Does he feel like he's talking at 2x speed right now? What's happening? Is is this a, like sped up? Hold on. Oh my god, it's at 1.3. That's why. I have like a more direct uh, speed thing. Opinion. Anyway, the next thing that she talks about is the cuddling. She said, and this is a quote, a lot of the touch was initiated by him, probably not realizing it. A lot of the cuddling he- Wait, what does that mean? We were cuddling and the- the wait, wait. 
A lot the, of the, the touch, touch was initiated wasn't initiated by him probably not realizing it. Like he didn't realize he was touching you, or he didn't realize that he was the only one doing the touching. Because I feel like that's kind of hard to miss. By him probably not realizing it. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but it was just me being drunk. I do think a lot of the cuddling was initiated by me, but some of it wasn't. I was also drunk, but my impression at the time was that it was very mutual. She also says that, quote, I didn't know cuddling was an invitation. I don't think just cuddling is an invitation for anything. I only brought the cuddling up because it's something that she didn't mention at all in her original stream. We sat on the couch. If you're cuddling with a girl while you're drunk, for fucking an hour <laughs> you are yeah you can touch her fucking stomach and if she says no you back off but like that's insane it's sexual assault because i didn't invite you to do it you've been cuddling on the couch for an hour bro what are you talking about ouch and the older guy sat right next to me while playing it was a little after that when I had resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Are these guys fucking babies? Like, it's tickling and biting. I Yeah, they're Minecraft YouTubers. These are Minecraft type activities. Tickling and biting. And again, it's something that I think people need to know about to understand my perspective fully. The next thing that she talks about is that I said she got up and sat back down with me multiple times. She agreed with this, but said that the reason she did this is because, quote, I didn't want someone I had watched for a while or with a large following to hate me for denying to even sit near him. Now this makes me feel terrible. It's something that she mentions throughout this power imbalance, but this is not something at all that I was thinking about at the time. Because there was no power imbalance, and if you concede to it, you are still retarded. Wait, hold on, wait. To even sit near him. I didn't want someone I had watched for a while or with a large following to hate me for denying to even sit near him. Now this makes me feel Okay, so there's a difference between identifying that there is some sort of power imbalance to a relationship and then someone abusing that power imbalance. There is no evidence that I have seen substantiated where he's gone and said, I can do wonderful things for your career if you let me tickle your belly, baby. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Were you blackballed in the last year that you didn't sleep with him? It's a field test. What happened to your career after that? Did people suddenly stop talking to you? Terrible. It's something that she mentions throughout this power imbalance, but this is not something at all that I was thinking about at the time. She was a VidCon invited guest. She had a hotel room on the same floor as Dream. She was friends with my friends. And honestly, I just never imagined that this is something that she could have thought. And I do think that's my problem. I should have been aware of this, or at least the possibility of this being the case. And I am sorry. I, I feel terrible about it. I've never really thought of- Cocked. Cocked L. Cocked cringe L. About power imbalance at all, to be honest. In that room, I wasn't thinking about- you know, If you're conceding to power imbalance, you're asking them to say you're raping again. You're asking- you're, you're, you're literally just writing back to your audience and you're like, yeah, this is right. You guys should use this again in the future. You're asking to get fucked if, you, if you're conceding that point. YouTube subscribers or fame or, or power or anything at all like that. I just saw us all as friends hanging out, having fun. That's like taking a box cutter to your dick. Getting on and being like, I'm so sorry for my power imbalance. It turned out that we've caught you lying at like six different points of your statement, but it never occurred to me about how much of a power imbalance that we had in between us. Like, you might as well just take a box cutter and fucking maim yourself now. Again, I'm not trying to downplay this by saying this. It is genuinely something that I'm going to be thinking about going into the future. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, buddy. Comes You're up gonna again. be thinking about it the next time one of these girls does this to you and they cite this example as why you haven't learned your lesson. And later, and I'll have more to say then. Next, she talks about how I mentioned that she stayed for hours even after her best friend left. She says that her best friend left throwing up in her hand and that she didn't know she had left, that she didn't make the conscious decision to stay. Now, this isn't my recollection of what happened. I actually... I remember Ghosty getting up to leave and Katie getting up to say goodbye to her. I also asked Dream about this and he had the same recollection as me. We were all drunk, so I- I keep thinking Ghosty is a dude because of that weird freak in the commentary community who lied about his dead mom. Like, that's the only thing I remember is that there's like this retard named Ghosty that comes from our space that lied about his mom dying. 
can't 100 percent say for sure what actually happened but as per my memory she was aware that ghosty had left also according to what she said katie and ghosty were sharing the same hotel room together so the obvious assumption is that they would probably leave together the fact that she chose to stay despite not really knowing most of the people there gave me a pretty positive impression on how she felt about staying there she says that after dude her friend was sick and drunk okay throwing up in her hand and then she's like i'm not gonna let this ruin my night and she stayed in a strange fucking minecraft youtubers a, a hotel room and she has the audacity to try to argue out of that are you kidding wouldn't most people go back with their sick friend like it doesn't make any sense ghosty left quote I put up with it in the moment because I- And yeah, obviously, future Nick here, um, that doesn't give you the right to just walk up and initiate sex with her because she stayed when her friend got sick. But to act like that's not a signal being sent back, that you're like, like you're cuddling with him. You stayed here late. It's like four in the fucking morning and she's literally laying on you. And you tickle her stomach and she's like, hold on this is sexual assault like get the fuck out of here dude i thought it was the price i had to pay to be around such big creators again like i said before this is just not something i even thought she could be thinking years ago people used to joke around saying well if you touch someone's belly button for longer than three seconds it's sexual assault that was always a meme we used to joke around about it when i was in high school and these guys went around and fucking did it this is some she touched my belly button for three seconds so she raped me type shit this is crazy. And I'm sorry that I didn't. Next, she talks about me being more touchy as the night went on and says this, quote, you didn't know me. Apparently you didn't even know my age, but you knew what I wanted. No, he assumed it's what I want. No one cares because you're an adult. Adults have to be adults at some point, honey. Like that's how it works. Like, oh, he, he knew I was inexperienced. I was but 18 years old. It's like, like that's some like I've been coddled my entire life. Why would you not, like, if you're at a party and everyone's drinking and you're saying that not even everyone knows your fucking age or whatever, why do you think that that plays a factor? Do they think like, oh, this is a child at our party? Like, what? Like, why are you infantilizing yourself? Because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? This is absolutely not how I think about this kind of situation at all. I would never think like that. And honestly, it's kind of yeah it's bad faith as vosh would say <laughs> an evil way to think about things just having the opinion that you can do anything because you're famous or whatever and i never once remotely thought anything similar to that and i feel terrible reading those words knowing that you think that about me no you feel terrible knowing that the internet now thinks that about you and it's partly your own fault because you posted a concession without talking to your friend I would never think that I'm owed anything from anyone just because I have a YouTube You are owed an apology that you continue to be feverishly denying by digging yourself a hole. Channel. Especially in an intimate context. Again, I'm really sorry for this and it actually has been pretty eye-opening to me and it's just not how I've ever really thought about stuff before. And I don't really think you're wrong for assuming that I thought like this because obviously there are people out there that think like that and use oh dude well there are people in the world that rape women all right so i understand why you think that a man would do something like that but i want you to know chat that i'm not one of those men how brave how stunning that to take advantage of people and it makes sense that if you think that about me that you would hate me but that is not who i am at all and i just really hope that you can understand that now another thing that she mentioned that changed my perspective on things was that she showed texts from two of her friends the day after checking up on her to see how she felt. She says, <laughs> quote, in the moment I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit like damn. I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was So drunk. she literally concedes that she was cool with it last night. And now during post-talk rationalization while she's talking to friends, she's slightly budged off of the fact that she was feeling good at the time. And this is something that I was actually- And the reason why she pushes um, back I is because she remembers that she was drunk. Also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk. And so this isn't like, oh, I feel weird. This is, well, I don't know. Maybe I didn't feel weird because I was drunk. Who knows? Tee hee. This is something that I was actually completely unaware of. 
I you were completely unaware of her being drunk? I wasn't aware of any uncomfortableness in oh, the moment. Oh, you weren't aware she was uncomfortable. Yeah, the reason why you weren't on, you weren't aware of it is because the message that you showed here says, I was chilling. But now looking back on it, post-talk rationalization, now I'm not so sure. So you obviously weren't aware that she was uncomfortable because she, in her like her own text messages, admits that she gave absolutely no signals that she was uncomfortable. A little bit like, damn. I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment. Because Keep in mind, while you're looking at this on the screen, can we find Katie's response? I want to show you what Katie said in her year-long prepared statement about George in comparison to this text message that she herself released that George apologized over, okay? Because I need you to understand why I'm so fucking snarky and rude about this. Where is her fucking take? Because it's, it's insane. I'll be able to find this in three seconds once I have the, uh, the stupid Katie Bugs video here. Hi. Um, so, let me see. Okay, so, here, this is where it is. Here, this is the allegation, okay? While you're hearing it, I am going to make this text gigantic, so you can read what she wrote in comparison to the schizo poem that she read, okay? So when you see the words, I was chilling. I was, I'm sweating. Okay, see the words, I was chilling. Listen to what Katie Bugs described in her live stream. Um, let me see. Uh, we need, we need some dramatic music for this. Uh, here, the rape theme. I guess myself all the time remembering back. Was he drunk too when he slipped his hand under my shirt in front of everyone in the room? Was it this drunkness that whispered to me as an unwelcomed warmth that prickled along my neck? Or was it rather this fake intoxication that allowed it to stay there as I sat silently, unmoving? At the beginning, I began to sympathize with him. I technically never said no, I suppose. And I never said yes. Time froze. Maybe I thought I could turn invisible if I was still. Maybe. It didn't have to be real then. I had just met him. I should have been more grateful. Maybe I still had some hope in the world. Maybe I just haven't met the world yet. You're lucky to be next to him. So many people would have traded me places. I wonder how many have. I remembered his age. I wondered where I would be at 26. I blamed myself for all the things I could have done. I really did. I convinced myself I was lucky. I let half a year pass, wondering why it's now that I still cry myself to sleep imagining it. Why it's now that no matter how many times I wash, I still feel dirty. Why is it that to him I'm a fake memory, but he haunts mine? It's not fair. I was kind in this world and it was not fair to me. I stay up cursing it. Power. He has so much more than me. Protection. It's unfair. It's unfair he can do that and it's unsafe for me to talk about it. Why in order to have a peace of mind do I have to threaten all I've worked for? I've never been one to be bold. So why do I have to feel guilty for staying silent? I feel weak for what happened to me and even weaker for not yelling it out. Why it's now that I still cry myself to sleep imagining it. Why it's now that no matter how many times I wash, I still feel dirty. Why is it that to him I'm a fake memory, but he haunts mine? It's- This is insane. When he was in college, noticing how my future was his past, and I wondered how he felt sitting so close to me. It was a little after that, when I had resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. 
I was scared and I felt sick, either from my alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. At the moment, I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> These are two statements that were released by her. Like, days apart. Like, give me a fucking break. Get the fuck out of here. Suck my dick. You people suck. Not you, chat. I love you, chat. But all these fucking people who get like, damn, there was a rape that occurred. Like, like ah, the fuck out of here. This is insane, bro. This is some Rape of Thrones Slazo shit that's going on right now. And, I, and only the based people can see it. <laughs> I think a little bit, like, quote, in the moment, I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit, like, damn. I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk. And this is something that I was actually completely unaware of. I wasn't aware of any uncomfortableness in the moment, after the fact, or even after Katie's first stream. I just wasn't aware that anyone had expressed discomfort until I saw these texts. I actually had the opposite impression just because we were all really friendly afterwards still. Dream actually had a conversation about this with almost everyone that was in that room a few months later. One of their friends had actually tweeted about Dream saying that he was inviting an 18 year old girl back to his hotel to drink at VidCon and was implying very negative things about Dream being a predator. So Dream realized this could have only been about Katie because it was a pretty specific call out, but thought that it was just being purposefully misleading from someone that hated him. Dream actually had no idea as well that anyone was uncomfortable and assumed that this tweet was implying Katie was uncomfortable with Dream. He reached out to Ghosty about it, asking what this was even about, and did the same to others, including Katie. Now, I'm not going to be showing Katie's text with Dream because at the time, Dream had told her that her messages and conversation would not leave their texts. However, here is Dream and Ghosty's conversation about it. I was never brought up or mentioned at all. <laughs> I won't leak your DMs, all right? So anyway, here's Dream's text with somebody else that gives similar <laughs> Like Dream promised that he won't release your statement. So anyways, your friend did not get the same promise. And also when Dream makes fun of Harry for being ridiculous and making stuff up because nothing happened and we were all still friends. He, he should leak the DMs while it's up to Dream. He can't force Dream to do it. He said, exactly. She actually spoke about this on her stream very recently, and I don't want to speak for her, so I'm going to play the clip where she clarifies these messages. The only time that we had a conversation about anything that had to do with that night was obviously when the stuff with Harry happened, um, and he... Uh, Who's Harry? How many fucking allegations came from the same group of friends? Oh my god. Uh, texted me asking if it seemed like anything had happened, and I, at the time, said no, because the conversation was not about George. The conversation- Thank fuck you're only five minutes in. Ch Dude, we are 14 minutes in and it's been an hour, okay? We, we, it's been a fucking hour and we are 14 minutes in. We're getting through this, okay? We're halfway. <laughs> the conversation was about him and it was about the underage drinking and it wasn't ever about whether or not Katie, you know, it was it was always just about him and not George, which is why I said, dude, no, nothing seemed wrong. Is this the same chick? No, this is goth girl, like, archetype too. No, this is a uh, ghosty. It was always just about him and not George, which is why I said, dude, no, nothing seemed wrong because he wasn't doing anything wrong. And I can stand by that. I, I will stand by that comment. And I said that in one of my posts that, you know. She also has a nose ring. Yeah, they have the cow thing that you pull on. You know, like it. Do you think it's consensual to pull on a girl's nose ring if they have the cow thing? I mean, aren't they just asking for their nose to get a tug if they have the cow thing? It wasn't him. That was the septum piercing. Yeah. And I said that in one of my posts that, you know, you know, like it. It wasn't him. Asher, that Asher's wrote probably no, as if that was like a legitimate question. That was our. <laughs> conversation it was never about george it was about him and the harry situation and it was about me it, it, at the time had seems that yeah you got the cow thing you're supposed to be like you gotta pull the girl by your cow nose dream was one who had taken advantage of katie and i said he didn't and i and i'm i didn't lie 
And Ghosty, I'm really not trying to use your words against Katie or you. I'm just trying to paint an accurate picture of our perspective of the night. And to do that, I kind of have to talk about everything that we do. <laughs> Give the nose ring a rub. Yeah, I did. I don't think your words negate at all how Katie felt, of course, but they did affect how I perceived the situation afterwards. Even after Katie's stream, this kind of confused us and Dream especially because he thought that this would have come up in these conversations. Now, he was... <laughs> He was so confused that he was convinced that Harry was essentially being malicious. And he said this and Ghosty and others there agreed with him. Ghosty even said that her friends should get to know him because she and Katie had actually had pretty negative opinions of Dream before meeting him, but had their minds changed after meeting him at VidCon. Wait, so Katie was going around telling, uh, there's no evidence for any of this obviously, but Katie was going around telling everybody that she hated Dream. And then when she met Dream, she was like, hey, that guy's actually pretty cool. And the only nights that they remembered were the, like the night before and the night she was sexually assaulted were her two like, ah, Dream is pretty cool. He gave us underage alcohol in his hotel room. I always thought he was a bad guy. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? This is obviously said about Dream and not me, but Dream looked at this as positive about the entire experience and shared this with me. Dude, if you got like assaulted, right? I, I don't know. Maybe chat. somebody in chat has been. I, I haven't, obviously. Uh, because I probably wouldn't be making jokes about it if I had. Um, have any of you guys like thought about like the hangout on that night and went, dude, there that was a great host. I would love to go back there. <laughs> like if your memory of your night or whatever, of like probably the worst night of your life. Because you don't know, honestly, Dream was a real good caterer. <laughs> he had some real good games. <laughs> It seems like Ghosty has changed her mind about this now, but I just think it's really relevant to how we felt about the situation as a whole and to show this to you guys. Honestly, over the last year or so, anytime a creator has kind of distanced themselves from me, I just assumed it was because of Dream. Dream had false grooming allegations against him, and I assumed that because of this and my association with Dream, people didn't like me. After Dream posted his video disproving these allegations, I honestly thought pretty poorly of creators that were still negative to me as now i thought there was literally no reason for it and now after seeing katie's follow-up i realized that probably everyone knew about this behind the scenes and i think that is uh oh rape of thrones chud logic salivating insane i was walking around with these people at other events or interact with them in any way and all the time they would just can we go to the priming video i was walking around from events oh where's the priming slazo video this is so funny because it's happening again. Dude, I literally said, if you go on YouTube long enough, you get reruns. They just have new faces. Like, um, Slazo got uh, race swapped for a British person in this one um, from, a, from an Australian. They race swapped him to being a British. Uh, let me see. There we go. There we go. What do you think about this, guys? Oh, Twitter there. art account where she made lewd depictions of her current friends. It's really weird. Okay, not that part. This part. Instead, a portion of this group of people in this group chat knew about Slazo's accusations a year in advance and hadn't told anyone. Meaning that they let this monster that they were so disgusted with go to events and be around people without letting anyone know. That's another huge red flag. What are we on now for? <laughs> I'm Alex also- They thought this guy was like a giga rapist, okay? And then he would just go to conventions and hang out and do YouTube events for a full calendar year. And they, and they didn't notify anyone that this guy was like a sexual assaulter uh cool nice one buddy good stuff thinking terribly about me and i didn't even know and neither did any of my friends if i'd seen katie and this is the live action remake of slazo yes king escapist i am saying that person i would have gone up to her normally i would have assumed we were still friends i think this is a massive injustice to katie it actually kind of makes me rethink a lot of my experiences with other creators just looking back on it with this new information. And I don't even know who these people are. And even right now, after- There should be a list of all the British YouTubers that have been supporting Katie be before and after she's been responding. Only the British ones. That's the people we need to know. All of this information is public and, and out there. I still haven't had a single private conversation with anyone who knew about it prior to Katie's stream. This is all just to say that I didn't have any idea that there was a problem and I wish that I had and I should have.
The last thing to mention is her age. Like I said, I wasn't aware at the time that she was 18. Do not give any yardage off this, you British fucker. 18. I mentioned that they had come from an official VidCon after party. They were drunk. And I made the assumption that knowing how these events are run, that she was probably over the age of 21, as they wouldn't have been able to drink in there otherwise. Now, they actually said that they drank somewhere else briefly before showing up. And that makes more sense. It is. Oh, did Ghosty change your position? Drank somewhere no else. one drank at the Instagram party because we weren't really there for long. But there was drinking that happened before we got to the hotel room that I completely forgot about. Oh, OK. So she goes on stream and tells people that there was no drinking before. And then after she realized she destroyed her friend's fucking story, then she tweeted a quick follow up. After a year of, of talking of, of talking about this privately with all your friends and figuring out your fucking story or whatever, you go live and then immediately three hours later put out a tweet saying oh actually um there was drinking Girls. all of these people suck briefly before showing up and yeah she just realized after knowing the story for a whole year and being finally able to talk about it that she fucked up one of the main parts where she fucking absolutely contradicted her friend's story from two days prior her apparent best friend by the way i guess they've never spoken about this that makes more sense how it, convenient yeah it is irresponsible of me that i made this assumption and going forward i will make sure to explain like where is this tweet where who's the fucking ghosty girl um i literally can just pull this up right now ghosty um like ghosty was so confident like a day prior that she wrote this shit on her fucking twitter like I'm, this is infuriating for me um we were there two nights. The first night we were already drunk, and the second night we didn't drink until we until uh, we got there. So I honestly think she misspoke because there's no way that any of us could have drank at the Instagram party because one, some of us didn't even get in, and two, Katie wasn't 21. So she was so confident that she went out and said that Katie misspoke, and then she just showed it back up again, and she's like, "Oh, uh, my bad, guys. Um, Teehee wall, I misspoke. Now it wasn't Katie. It was me." Lee asked for a person's age. And I'm sorry, Katie, that- Is I this still a drama of George touching a woman's waist? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Did not do that for you. I also brought up how when I was going back through the texts, I found a picture of one of them wearing a 21 plus age wristband. And I showed this picture. Now, this is from a group chat that I wasn't in, but Dream showed me this when I was making my video. And I figured it was relevant to why I was under the impression- To be wasn't. fair- a lot of us thought that he was talking about Katie, and I thought the implication was pretty heavy. But I went back, and supposedly what he said, if I remember correctly, uh, was that there was someone in the group who had a 21 wristband, so he just assumed they were all 21. That might have been on everybody else. That might not have been. I, I haven't. I haven't gone back and pulled that clip up. I don't remember what he said, but I thought the implication was that that was Katie's wrist, or at least that um, he'd seen proof of that. ATM. It is now mentioned that Katie wasn't actually the one that was wearing it and it was just someone else's hand. So in these texts, they say, this is a quote, loose ass 21 plus wristband. We have a strat. Oh my god, no. No. Wait, so they're talking in the group chat about how they can slide the wristband off and then fake their age. Wait, why didn't you just include the part where they're talking about literally sliding the wristband off so people can drink to fucking lie about their age at the party? Now to explain what- Now that looks bad on George, because if Dream showed that to George, then the implication is that people aren't 18, I mean, aren't 21, right? Obviously. But like, <laughs> these people, you gotta be kidding me. This strategy is for the people that- Do you understand? Do you guys ever hear the story about the girl who got roofied at a fucking TwitchCon? Um, it wasn't a VidCon, it was a TwitchCon, but it was similar to, like, the setup for the Instagram party. Um, so Keemstar is rolling up with Only Use Me Blade. Uh, notorious drunk. Total asshole. Keemstar is banned from TwitchCon. Not even supposed to be at the party. But he gets in, and then the security comes up to him, and somebody pulls him over, and he gets fucking doing his thing. And while he's doing that, Blade just gets free. I don't know if he's banned or not, but he gets free and he just starts pounding drinks. He's pulling drinks out of girls' hands and smashing them in front of him. Like he's like literally just chugging fucking random girls' drinks in front of him. So he's putting them back and putting them back and putting them back, ripping them out of girls' hands, putting them back. And then all of a sudden he goes up to Keemstar and he goes, 
yeah, I don't feel so good. And he's like crying, like his fucking eyes are crying and he's stumbly and wobbly. So what happened was he got roofied. They were trying to date rape a girl at TwitchCon and Blade fucking caught the assist and chugged the drink back. Okay. And he got roofied and the girl got away. <laughs> Do not fucking keep you. Dude. So moral of the story chat. If you ever go to a party like this, fucking keep your hand over the top of your drink. Uh, because if they're open cups, you're in danger. Okay. Haven't really been in a club environment or a place where you would get a wristband like this. Essentially, they give you this wristband to show that you are over 21 so that you can get drinks from the bar. These wristbands are made in a way so that once they're put on, they cannot be taken off without breaking it. And that's precisely why they're used to prevent people from underage drinking. But clearly the security that gave the girls these bracelets didn't do a good enough job and didn't put it on tight enough. And this just shows that you can never be too careful and shouldn't make assumptions like I did. And <laughs> I saved I the girl asked and her killed age. the guy. So there's a balance. Fuck off, Smaggle. And I am sorry that I did not. This is not a mistake that I will make again. From Katie's statement, it kind of seems like she didn't believe that I didn't know she was 18 and kind of thinks I'm just being dishonest about and the reality is that it doesn't matter. Who fucking cares? Oh, that's so base, George. I'm so glad you said that. Not. She said that she had it in her bio and that I DM'd her, so she was very confident that I knew. Later that night when I left, I received Instagram DMs from him. And in my Instagram bio- Wait, in you're saying later that night after you left? Is that the first night or the second night? Told was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. For context, as you can see here in this screenshot, her age is actually in her display name on Instagram. And because of this, I was also pretty confused how I didn't know that she was 18, as it's literally in her name, not even in her bio. It's in her name. If it was in her bio, it, it would make sense to me because I could totally see myself going to her profile the first time I wanted to okay. message her and just clicking message and never really going back to her profile and essentially just anytime. You know I'm going to take a, a shot in the dark here. Did she change her fucking name to like arrow sign at VidCon or something? Because a lot of people do that. They put like arrow sign at VidCon in their name. My interact with her was just- Nope, Smaggle said nope. Oh. Through the direct DMs where you actually can't see someone's bio. So I actually completely see where she's coming from. And it does seem kind of ridiculous that I didn't know. So because of all this, I actually started to look into this quite a lot because I know that I'm not stupid and must have seen it. But also in my head, I know that I didn't know her age, so it, it conflicts. So today I actually found out there are two different types of professional Instagram account. There's a creator account and a business account. And for some reason, Katie's account was a business account instead of a creator account. We actually joked about this at the time. Shut the fuck up, business. I can literally book you. Through our DMs, because I was actually able to book her as like a business. And I didn't really know why I was able to do that. And weirdly enough, it actually turns out- Wait, and you can see her fucking username at the top. Oh no. That business accounts don't display special characters from a username in the username that's displayed. And if you don't know what I mean by special characters, basically just a character that isn't something you can type on a normal keyboard. And because her age and the smiley is a special character, it literally just didn't display it in her username. <laughs> name at all and you can actually see this in a picture that i sent to her no this guy is like debating himself on why he should have known and getting debunked by himself that's what's happening right now none of this matters but he's like this is oh god he's making better arguments than her and then debunking them i don't it's like he's trying to shadow box a better adversary uh, during our messages that her age is not displayed in her name and you can also see this in the screenshots that i used in my previous video that her age also isn't visible despite the fact that her age was in her name at this time but now actually as of today her account isn't a business account anymore, so her age shows up again. And this is a screenshot I took. So she realized it and changed it back. That's my asso uh, my assessment of the situation. Today. Obviously, this wasn't a feature that I knew about at the time. Oh my god. And I actually 
had to do quite a bit of research today to work that out. So I hope that could kind of clear that up a little bit and that maybe you can see how I wouldn't have seen it. I actually do think that he's a homie playing with two controllers right now. Yeah. The age difference between me and Casey was a pretty big factor. I am older than her. And based on what she said, I do have more experience than her. She never went in. <laughs> yeah, dude, because she thinks that touching your tummy is rape. Yeah, 100%. You're I mean, I think 99% of chat is more experienced than her. It's the exact specifics either. Oh, so wait. I Sorry. I, I was thinking retarded. No, 99% of chat is not as retarded as her. So out of I, I don't know why I, I mixed up experience. Sorry. Back for Katie, I've chosen not to give any more details than she did to make sure that I'm not airing out any information that she's not comfortable with being known. But I have clarified that the furthest things went was under the shirt touching. She did say that the level of intimacy that we had together was the furthest that she'd experienced. But to me, it was quite tame. And when I say this, I am not trying to devalue how she feels about this at all. I'm just trying to point out that we clearly viewed things differently. And this is something that I have learned from now and I will be taking very seriously moving forward. And I am truly sorry, Casey, for not realizing this and not taking this difference into account. Fuck off, you fucking asshole. This is so gay, dude. Where is the cutoff? Is like Freshly 20 going to be the next thing? Like, oh my God, you're literally dating a 20 year old child and you're 27 years old. Oh my, like, it's not even dating. It's like a hookup at best. That's where this was headed. It's not like they were going to date. At best, they were going to hook up, right? Like, who fucking cares? It is clearly something that is extremely important to you. Yeah, dude. 100%. I agree with, like, Destiny's assessment that there are two types of parties in college. There are the parties that are 21 plus, and then there are the parties with the creepy fucking dudes who are hanging out with, like, freshmen in, in college or whatever. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Yes, that is that is totally fucking real. But if you're talking to someone and you find out, like, organically, that they're not like, oh, you're not 23, 24, you're actually, like, 19, 18. Like, I, who cares? Like, you're, you're not planning on dating them. You're planning on hooking up with them. Like, what does it matter? They're an adult. And I'm sorry. Even after everything I've just said, things would be very different if I could just say that I had asked her if she was comfortable when she had said yes. But the fact is, I never did ask this. As I mentioned, no, there are a lot of- do not concede this. Please don't concede this. Things that she said she thought that I wasn't aware of that if I had known would have changed a lot. And going forward, this will be something that I take into account. Oh my God, this guy sucks so much, dude. Dude, this guy's gonna have like 40, 80 vision, okay? When he's like sitting there shit face drunk on the couch, he's gonna be like looking for signs with like 3D vision to see if they're actually like upset while they play games on their phone. In every interaction I have with anyone, sexual or not, I am- Every interaction, dude. He's gonna be looking for platonic interactions to see if people are showing discontent through like- I, 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 Sorry, insane. Katie, and I'm sorry for- how this will affect you going fuck you fuck you for apologizing to that liar board and i'm sorry that everything got to this nothing point. will happen to her going forward that she hasn't already caused herself like this is insane but i just hope that after hearing my perspective you can understand spine not found so true k babe or whatever stand that i never had any bad intentions and never meant to hurt you the, the, uh he's going to salute the minecraft weirdos and find the balance like yeah all this does is just make this so this this is going to happen to somebody else now They're, this can't end now this is this is going to happen either him again which will be hilarious or it'll happen to somebody else i think that that is essentially all the information that i can add to the situation after her first statement you're a coward and i hate you I actually disagreed a lot with how things were portrayed and was pretty- You disagreed so much that you're the reason why they were portrayed that way. Confused by a lot of- I can't imagine anyone would be inviting her to any parties now. Oh no, she's like undateable. Who the fuck would date her? Details. But her most recent response made- Parties. Parties the least of her problems. Things. She wrote a twit longer and fucking- a, a, She wrote a poem about how she's been brutally raped, basically, because someone tickled her stomach. A lot clearer to me and now i do think we agree pretty much on the order of events we just don't necessarily agree on my intentions but again i do really hope that her seeing this can help with hold on 
To be fair to George, in this position, I can see why it would be tough to outright deny her position. He can't really say that none of this matters. As for uh, No, no, you don't understand. He's lost everything. He's always going to be looked at negatively by a large portion of that community based off the fact that this girl was just 18 years old. He's not getting that yardage back no matter how many times he apologizes or no matter how many times he fake postures on videos. His life before this day is over as said as it's been. He now has to move on to the future. What does he want to put into this world now? What audience does he want to cultivate? What people does he want to bring in? Okay? And by going and doing this half denial, half apology, uh, all this does is try to pander to people he's already lost. They're gone. And then it takes other people who could potentially be new fans of him and go like, oh God, this guy's a fucking loser. I don't know, dude. I think this is a mistake. I don't think he had any chance of maintaining um, what, I don't think he could get back what he had. I think he's trying to maintain what's left and it's a losing fight. It's cringe. There are actually a couple of other things that I wanted to mention before I end this video that are not at all as important as anything else I've said before this, but this seems like the right time to address other concerns that people have had. The first thing that I want to talk about is a comment that I made about Punz's girlfriend at the time, Andy. I was in a call with Punz and Andy was in the shower and it was known that we could hear Andy as we had brought it up previously within the call. She was talking very sexually with Punz, essentially complaining that this. puns wasn't leaving the call to go have sex with her in the shower i don't remember the exact quote what? that i said but this is what andy quotes me saying Wait, if you don't what? go in the shower and have sex with andy i will i do remember saying something <laughs> why is this in the video why did he just that? What's me saying if you don't go in the shower and have sex with andy i will i do remember saying something along these lines <laughs> Puns got cucked by Dream. Wait, 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 hold on. Dude, how many guys were gonna bang this girl this guy's girlfriend? Essentially saying, come on, puns, go have sex with your girlfriend. <laughs> oh my god, this is a joke, right? Who's begging you to go have sex with her in the shower? <laughs> Why are you putting this in your video? Power. Or someone else will. But I do understand how this could be disrespectful. <laughs> Fuck out of here! Shut up, bro. You're a fucking baby, and so is this girl. If that's what she's mad about. And that was not my intention. Shut at all. the fuck up. Knowing how she felt after the fact, I do feel bad, and I. <laughs> Why you shouldn't? Fuck you. I'm sorry to both puns and Andy for this. She wasn't even there, was she? Was she even present for this combo? Like. Come on. My friends, including puns, we often say ridiculous things and that's just our type of banter. If anyone ever said something to me about me making them uncomfortable, I would obviously do my best to try avoid making them uncomfortable. But Andy wasn't really one of my friends, so it makes more sense that she doesn't really know that's the type of way that I joke around. And I hope that she understands that I didn't mean any harm by Katie it. won? Yeah, she literally won, dude. Katie actually just won. Yeah. Finally, something that I've wanted to talk about for quite a long time, but have never done, is the Technoblade charities? Oh my God, no, dude! Just end the video. Wait, what are you doing? Dream situation. People were upset that I was playing soundboards during the beginning of the stream. For context, this event wasn't intended to be serious or sad. It was a for fun event and to celebrate the memory of Technoblade. A narrative that was massively spread was that I played the Take them lashings during Techno Dad's speech. But that actually was not the case. This is what and you I need to do to get back into the community. All the creators were in a call just talking to each other before the speech had even started. I actually <laughs> Come on! Techno Dad a few days after the event. How sorry I are you? To make sure that he wasn't upset or uncomfortable with anything that I had said. And we discussed it all. He told me that he didn't have a problem with what I did and that the public reaction was actually pretty crazy to him. And then he invited me to the next year's event. Another thing that people criticized me for is that I didn't donate to the charity. But again, this actually isn't the case. I donated $2,000 to the charity off the event. Wow, dude, you're so based. What is that, one four thousandth of your revenue? But I did do it anonymously, so... Wait, I'll... why would you... Okay. Obviously, I'm not surprised at all that people don't know this. All I donated right. anonymously because I just didn't really want to make it about me and just donated because I wanted to. Obviously, there was no actual requirement that audience's donations act into the donate to the other two as a way of showing that I'm a bad person way off topic compared to the other two things that i've mentioned in this video okay but it is something that has been constantly brought up since it happened as a way of 
showing that I'm a bad person. So I wanted to clear that up. And that's pretty much everything I have to say. So I hope you can understand. And yeah, bye. Fuck off, dude. You suck. You are awful. Oh, God. I've never seen a guy win a drama look by looking like such a fucking loser. Holy shit, dude. I guess, dude, sometimes losers get first to the finish line, I guess. I don't know. Holy shit, was that a hard watch. Dude, we just watched a 20-minute video, the 27-minute video for an hour and 20 minutes. That's great. Jesus. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. All right, let me run through donos. And we're going to keep the keep the rape train going, boys. Uh, Sip Man, thank you for the membership. Late Diorio, actually, I read this one already. Mari5 Gifted, thank you. Connor Sween, thank you for getting me through my crummy retail job with URR, peak content. CEB Applejack, $5. Speaking of Destiny, he just got crushed by Nor Norman Finkelstein politics in a tough crowd. I, I watched that. It looked like he was fucking tearing that guy to shreds. That guy looked like a total pussy, but I don't know. Somebody, $2.00. Cheers, my dude. Love ya. No sexual assault. Thank you. Um, David Mudkip, thank you for the membership. Biting, tickling, and cucking, a Minecraft story. Uh, Ian Sharp, $5. Step one, party with Minecraft YouTubers. Step two, question mark. Step three, ultimate rape review. Uh, Captain Poofers, $5. I never think I'd be able to see a tickle dynamic go off the rails well you've seen one today mute map maker five dollars i can't imagine the crushing weight of the cognitive dissonance he must be feeling from having to both deny the allegations while validating katie I, that blows my fucking mind too uh ecat 08 thank you for the two canadian puff poofers five dollars something that is in, uh interesting is being vague about what area he supposedly touched yeah apparently he was creeping down starting at the belly so, like, what, what is creeping? Is that going up the shirt? And now you're slowly creeping down to the waist. Listen, if he was going anywhere near the vagina or the breasts, that would be the first thing we heard about. The reason why Katie didn't accuse him of that is his hand clearly wasn't close enough to either region and no one was willing to lie for her. That's the only reason. Listen, if it was anywhere close to a private area, that would have been mentioned. So it's out of my hands to even discuss it. Um... Because, I mean, if she could use it, why wouldn't she? Why would I even consider that to be an option? $2, Germ70. Nick, we need the manhunt theme in the background. <laughs> Joe Mega, $5. Did any of Slazo's accusers also have a septum piercing? It wasn't that cool back then to have a to have a cowbell nose ring. Healing Potato, thank you for your 31 months. And you said potato. Germ70, $2. Only use me blade. Roofy W. Well, I mean, he was roofied, so Roofy W. Uh, Captain Poofers, $5. Only use me blade. Some heroes don't wear capes. Shiny Espers, $5. Does this mean that anytime Augie and the boys, uh, hug slash handshake, it's actually sexual assault? Nick, did they touch you? Yes, buddy. Captain Poofers, $5. Off topic. Nick, are you going to cover the Ricky Berwick drama? He's taking some heat there. Yeah, it, someone tweeted it out and this is the best response to the Ricky drama. Young Crip is, like, turning in his grave right now, seeing that Ricky deleted his fucking tweet over Backlash like that. That's so funny. Uh, and then tried to pretend that he wasn't tweeting it for the reason it was tweeted. Uh, Germ72, George now cucked. Um, Shiny Espers, $2. Well, yeah, Nick, she's freshly 18. <laughs> Guys, by the way, what are your thoughts on the URR? Uh, do you think uh, Katie won, or do you think that... Uh, George won. Who won? Who's there? Joe Dessa! Okay, keeping going right now. We got a few more donos to read. Uh, George would plead guilty to a murder that he didn't commit. The glove didn't fit because it was freshly 18. Thank you, $5 from Trans Smaggle. By the way, there's a poll up right now. Who won, not who's right, who won between Katie and George? I'll rejoin you on that poll when we're done reading donations. Shadow Warden, $5. Tipster showing him how to get back into the community while covered in oil. Uh, Kevin, $5. Did they bang? I don't get it. A girl once sat on my lap when I was drunk. Did she sexually assault me? 
Only thing that violated here was the girl code when they left her. True. Rod Ellis thinks George won. Look at the comments. They're all saying Katie over-exaggerated her claims and villainized George. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's a George W. with any less than Katie getting run offline for making these false allegations. Now, does that mean that you should go out and do anything about it? No, absolutely not. But the fact of the matter is that instead of criticizing her, they're coddling her. And I think that's pathetic because that's just insane to me. There's no fucking way. Uh, I, I think that anything less than her leaving in shame on her own accord without any like direct fucking intervention from anybody else... Uh, is is kind of a loss here because this is such a clear fucking this is such an easy win to get um and one month from ba beige badge uh katie won but at what cost she's a known liar now good job chat right now is chiming in 61 percent katie 39 percent george keep in mind george objectively won this situation in terms of the allegations but chat deems that katie is currently in the lead for uh how much had to be given away? Uh, so we got the Reddit post right now. Let's hear what Dream was taken to thinks about all of this. Uh, obviously, this subreddit is um, the one that is uh, most known for their for the where, where John Swan started a fight a few years ago against Dream. It is not the main Dream subreddit. It is an active subreddit where they talk about Minecraft community drama. Um, so let me just give this a nice refresh because this was over two hours ago now. Uh, this is where I found the link to the video. He continues to have far more grace in the situation than I think a lot of people would. That's true, but I think they should have less grace. There should be less grace here. Uh, another great video from him. No bullshit. Provided more than enough additional info and context. So they're liking it. Um, why did she lie about George's online friend that was there? Um, they said she didn't lie, but got confused on who said what. You guys, you guys are fucking spineless fools. Oh, she was just confused. Tee hee. She rehearsed her fucking. She cried herself to sleep for 365 grueling nights. But then when she was asked to talk about her situation, not even, not even asked, when she decided to finally come forward, she didn't have her story straight. Guys, come on. Organically, she just didn't know. She didn't know. How can you confuse who said what if you had to manually blur the username? If the message wasn't from his friend, she would have seen that clear as day. I'm not sure. As mentioned the other day, we just got to roll with it. They've won. It's simply not possible to point out inconsistencies without it getting accused of victim blame and woman hating. There's no victim. There is no victim. Nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. <laughs> Like, literally nothing happened. There's no victim here. Uh, nobody's victim blaming because there's no victim. I, I think I, I I talked about this the other day. There was this based person on Twitter who was arguing. And they just needed a little push from yours truly. Let me find this fucking tweet. Um, hold on. Where Where is this fucking thing? There was a tweet that came out, like, in the last 48 hours of this person being, in my opinion, a little too charitable. But it's the truth. And people are like, oh, Nick, you're going off now. Oh, Nick, you're just like, you're just saying it or whatever. Oh, you're walking up to the door a few days ago. But now you're like really fucking saying it. Cause it's, it's, yeah, it, someone needs to say it. Um, because some people on Twitter seem to think that there was a sexual assault that happened. And I need to remind them that that's not, not true. Um, here, this is the one. Let me pull up this. So someone wrote on this part right here. I'm really trying not to victim blame, but there are so many holes in Katie's story and she started to backtrack when George's stream came out. Like, again, I'm not trying to victim blame, but it's just the truth. And this he is the He asked us who I cannot remember. Once again, I was drunker than the night before and was willing to go anywhere. I was naive and so we went back. So she's claiming she was drunker than the night before when she was drinking all night, okay? I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby. And a friend saw her in the lobby to notify how drunk she was. On the way, they were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and it was an eerie feeling, like they could sense something was wrong. Okay, so then her best friend does a but stream. But then it ended up coming But then it ended up coming out. And we made a game plan. Let's go back to the hotel. You know, it's totally fine. Um, we went back to the hotel. 
and that's where it came from. Um, it was a 16 up party. No one drank. Um, people claimed that we came to the hotel having already drank. We didn't. We didn't. Um, we went back to the hotel, didn't drink, went to their hotel room, and that's when we started to drink. He asked us who I cannot, well, we went back. I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby <laughs> on the way. And then, and then she went on Twitter and said, we didn't drink until we got there. I think she misspoke. This is the misspeak. I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby <laughs> on the way. They were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and it was an eerie feeling. Okay, so then this um, fucking girl, again, chimed in to say, Oh, teehee, lol, I forgot we drank somewhere else. So she was a little drunk. So now I'm supposed to believe with all of the lore, okay? All of the lore, says Spencer. Um, the, all right, so the original story was they got fucking shit-faced and went up to the room and got drunk again to the point where she was stumbling around and she walked up to somebody, Katie, walks up to somebody who's worried about her safety, okay? Then the second story was that they didn't drink until they got to the hotel and that Katie must have misspoke. Now the third version of the story is that they drank in between the Instagram party where they didn't drink, to be clear. Uh, where they didn't lie about their age to drink, even though there's messages saying that like they were trying to slip the bracelets off. I guess people didn't get in. Apparently, they did drink sometime in between then, but um, then they went there and drank more, which is fine. Okay, maybe you did misspeak. Let's be ultra omega charitable. Let's say that's true. Like they again, said listen to her story again. Once again, I was drunker than the night before and was willing to. What the fuck were you drinking in this intermission party between the Instagram party and Dream's house that made you drunker than the night before where you guys were drinking all night? Were you drinking like fucking moonshine? Were you just guzzle? Do they fucking funnel it? And they just started like shoving it down your... Th How did you show up to the house drunker than the night before? If your friend doesn't even remember you guys drank at all. But then it ended up coming... And then the fucking change up is that, oh, we went somewhere else. I guess she had a few drinks. Somewhere there's a lie. This all is not just a coincidence. Someone is lying. And they like to say that we're freshly 18, we're just kids. These are 18 and 19 year old women. Okay? I was doing YouTube at 21. All right? There are plenty of capable YouTubers who can weave through stories like this and discuss actual legitimate issues and stuff like that and, and, and make all this stuff uh, when they're 18 and 19 years old. These are not retarded. I mean, maybe they are, but these are not like infants okay they can navigate their story they've been working on for a year there's no reason that there are this many holes to cipher through like this makes absolutely no fucking sense to me but um yeah we gotta roll with it they've won you can't say anything unless there's fucking um getting accused of whatever so i wrote back to the girl who said this she's like yeah i'm not trying to like victim blame here it's like don't worry you're not victim blaming. They described an act of touching someone's stomach after cuddling for an hour without any clear indication of Katie feeling uncomfortable. That's not a sexual assault. There's no victim blaming going on, uh, which was Coming out. received And we made a well. game plan. Let's go back to um, Again, we had this other interaction, which was pretty funny. I put a typo in it. People cried, but I don't care. I'm not a, I'm not a reporter here. Look at this. Mr. Beast's team has removed George Not Found from their Feastables Instagram post. The famous Minecraft YouTuber is was was recently under fire after reports emerged regarding him not sexually assaulting an 18-year-old adult woman during a VidCon party last year. And I was baiting this whole tweet. Someone was writing me like, as a journalist, you should delete that because you put a typo in it. No, the whole reason that was here is so somebody would reply going, what happened? And then I can write, he got canceled for not raping someone, I guess. That was the setup for the joke, is that like someone would ask me what the fuck I was talking about because this was worded so retardedly. And then I can just chime in being like, I guess they 
took him off the fucking chocolate bar commercial because he didn't rape that girl. I don't know. I what what other what other uh, <laughs> what I, that was the punchline. Yeah, I mean, uh, what what else can I draw from it? And people like me when I tell a lie, uh, you're not assaulting. Okay, that's not the one of them. You know damn well that's not what it was. No, it was. No, it 100% was uh, exactly what happened. Um, has there been any developments in the Wilbur Soot thing? Uh, no, there haven't. He got accused of rape. Uh, he got accused of biting women. And then he completely dropped off the face of the earth because Katie published a false allegation of sexual assault. And now nobody's investigating Wilbur anymore. He's not even a topic of discussion in anyone's streams. Um, she's completely stepped on that other girl who was telling her story. And it's so funny because if you go back and you watch um, Katie's story, right? Katie Bugs. She says that like she was inspired to come out because of the Wilbur thing. And the funniest part of this whole thing is that now no one cares about Wilbur anymore and they're not investigating him because of her false allegation. They've got rape fatigue, yeah. Let me see if I could find this. Um, what's the girl's name? Shovel? Shelby. Here, listen to this. Hi, mods. I um, okay. I want to start this by saying I wouldn't be here without Shelby. I was ready to disappear with this secret forever. I never knew that creators were allowed to talk about these kinds of things. And you I literally took over her whole story, pushed her out of the airwave, and now no one is investigating anything that happened to her because you sucked up all the clout in the room. <laughs> You're a piece of shit. <laughs> like, yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, this is insane. This is horrible. Um, you gave a shout out to the girl you totally just stomped all over. Um, so that's funny. That's another funny one. What else do we got here? Um, you're a clout absorber. <laughs> you're not even a clout chaser. You're a clout absorber. Thank you, Tomit. I appreciate that. That's a good, I'm stealing that meme. Um, please avoid rage commenting. Sort your emotions out before using the... Guys, I, we didn't avoid it. We rage posted hard. I'm sorry to Nightmare12. Um, yeah, she got bitten by the rape bug. <laughs> My name is Welsh. George's response was really good. You could tell he was completely confused by any of this, but he's taken responsibility for the parts he was involved in. No, he took responsibility for shit that he didn't do or shit that wasn't wrong. How could you not see that? How could you not notice? Like, and it's because these are all the kids. Like now we're we're getting a we're getting a view of all the children who are dealing with the story, and it fucking drives me nuts to see. Like this is this is proof that fucking Katie One is reading the Dreams own fans rationalize this stuff because Wilbur came out and just gave them some confirmation bias they needed. Um, damn, that was a very good response. Maybe I'm naive, but I believe that everything he said is the truth and his perspective. Effective. Oh, he apologized and confirmed he didn't mean to hurt her and was just dumb. Oh, I plead the dumb. I plead the, the, the sixth. I plead that I'm retarded. Like, Jesus. Uh, the DM being unclear and faked from her friend is kind of damning. Yeah, you, I'd say it's pretty damning. That's like her fourth major lie. Like, I, yeah, dude, that's pretty. I would say that's probably fairly damning. Um, by the way, it's it's fucking 5446. Katie's still winning. It's at a thousand votes. I'll cut it off at like 1200 um for the for the votes in the chat cuz then at least most of the chat has voted. Uh how many do we have? Oh, we have 2000 watching. So I don't know, maybe I'll let it go a little further. Uh if you haven't voted, vote now. Um cuz we're going to we, we I, I genuinely want to see if we can pull this 50-50 cuz we're that's what we're, it's looking like it's going to be close. Um one thing I'm thinking about is how George said he was walking around hanging out with creators at events who knew about Katie's side of the story, who possibly thought about him being a fucking abusive predator, but no one ever brought it up to him, and we'll never know, but it, this, is like, <laughs> like, this is not another miscommunication. These people are fucking malicious. This is Rape of Thrones, dude. Dude, could you imagine? It's just like, that, that, that's the thing. That's, that's how it really works with the British YouTubers. Like, Alex would be snickering. He's like, yeah, that makes a fucking pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ever hear the Trollsis allegations? Trollsis was a YouTuber who got accused, and I don't know where that ended, so I'm not like, this is not a uh, condemnation or condoning of his actions. I don't remember uh, what happened to him. But Trollsis was accused, right? 
and he was at a he was he entered a VidCon party with I'm Alex in the room or at least a house thing and Lord Vega was there so Alex is being gay and snickering in the corner being like yeah trolls this is here look at that little nonce that pedophile <laughs> and then fucking Lord Vega is like wait that guy's a fucking predator hold on that guy who just walked in with his two boys that guy's a fucking predator and then, because apparently he was hanging out with uh, Vega's friend the night before, who's a girl, right? And they were hanging out and whatever. And Vega walks up to me and goes, so what's the deal? You some kind of fucking freak? Like, wh- what's going on? Like, all the British YouTubers were sitting in the corner being like, oh my god, he's a fucking pedophile. <laughs> and Vega's like, are you a fucking predator? I'm going to call up my girl right now. If, he said, if she said you did any shit right now, I'm going to punch you in the fucking face where you stand. Um, which is a lot more of a rational response, I'd say, if you thought that a predator was in your VidCon house. But when people say stuff like this, like, oh my god, they, they, they went to conventions or whatever, and it's really weird, and maybe these guys, like, just totally brushed shoulders with him and never said anything, that's totally in character for the types of YouTubers you're talking about here. Uh, cause it's been the way that the British YouTube space has acted for the better part of the last five years. Even longer, probably the last six or seven. Um, they're not confrontational until their audience gets involved and then they can swing them at you. Then they're confrontational very much so. Uh, but they'll, they'll stand in the, in the vicinity of someone they think is a potential rapist and they won't notify any of the girls present or guys present. We don't, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, fucking shaming anybody here. Yeah. Or the guys present and they just let stuff like this happen at conventions. Cool. Um, yeah. So that's that. Oh, and obviously the girl wrote back, uh, wrote to Vega saying that he didn't pull any weird shit. So then I think the guy just left. Um, but yeah, that's that story. There's a lot of Vega. If you don't know who Vega was, we did a podcast with him called Half Baked on the better part of two years ago. Me, Turkey, Tom, and Vega did like a 30 episode show. And um, at VidCon, he was like the muscle. So at one of these VidCon parties, I was I brought up this story one of the last few streams because we were talking about underage drinking and its prevalence at VidCon. I've witnessed it. I've drank with Tom and Augie when they were 19 and 20. I have no fucking problem saying that online. I don't care. Um, but fucking someone passed 15-year-old Aiden projects a blunt, and it was always alleged to be I'm Alex. We don't know for sure if 15-year-old I'm Alex got passed a blunt by fucking... Uh, Alex or whatever but what we do know is every time that Aiden would show up as 15 year old Aiden to these places where he shouldn't be everyone would be like yo Vega Vega can you get rid of Aiden he's back again can you just tell him to leave and he'd be like homie you gotta go you know what's funny is actually I have a picture of Aiden at this party uh, and you probably think that's weird but until you see why I have it I have to google it um Oh, I don't know. All right. Pyrocynical kissing girlfriend. It's like a viral picture. Images. Maybe I don't have it. Kissing girlfriend at VidCon. Does anyone have the picture? Pyrocynical kissing girlfriend VidCon. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. Oh, this was viral. Where the fuck is it? Pyrocynical Hyogen. VidCon. If someone has it, please DM it to me because it is a hilarious photography piece. Um, Pyrocynical Hyogen. No, I don't see it. Goblin sent it to me? Let me see. No, that's not the one. That's not the one. That's crazy. I this picture used to be everywhere. Oh, that's sad. Check shot. Yeah, no, goblin, it's not in there. That's not it. Um maybe Hmm, I might have to give up on it. I'm not seeing it. I've been reading chat all stream. I've been quoting people. Um, let me see. One more. Hmm. 
our search. No. Aiden was like stalker posting, staring at them as they kissed creepily. Yeah, it's not there. Oh well. Um. Edwin, the same guy who jumped on the Onision hate bag wagon, is doing an over an hour long piece clearing his name. <laughs> I can't believe I. Is that real? I thought he did that already. What is he clearing his name of? God, his channel doesn't even show up anymore and he's active. Let me see. Homeboy Edwin. No, he's not. Catching up on Onision. He's doing George Not Found. Unless he's like doing another. Oh, two weeks ago he did a channel update. I don't know, he's been covering my stuff recently, I think. Yeah, he's going live tonight. Looks like. Oh, wait, he's trying to clear Onision? Is that what you're saying? Catching up with Onision. This has no structure. And how is this going to last two more hours? There's so many reach less than two weeks. Oh, I read this wrong. Wait, he oh, he's watching Onision's video. That doesn't mean he's defending Onision. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. Or at least defending him any more than we did back in the day. I think he probably just reacted to Onision's new video clearing his name, and it's probably just a clickbait title. Um, yeah, it's going over the allegations. Yeah, I don't know. I think I just, I, I just got one guide in the chat. You're creating your your spawn camping drama, your door tapping. Um, but we got so let's see. Oh wow! Who's that? Chat decided that uh, Katie won fifty two percent of the vote with uh, 1,200 votes counted for. Katie won the drama chat. End poll. It's official. Katie officially won the drama.